thanks very much for turning up, giving us the opportunity to uh, uh, put our side of the uh, story. Um, the dispute today by TSSA and RMT members jointly has had uh, fantastic support once again. Uh, we believe it's been the best support all told because uh, not just what our members are saying that they're solid, but the disruption has been uh, particularly bad today, which we apologise to the travelling public on. However, there's been a number of, uh, I would say, bone-faced lies uh, by uh, TfL saying that they're running 50% of the trains. I don't know, you know if they call a, a shuttle one train, uh, but certainly, if that's the case, uh, then why are people uh, kicking up so bad about the disruption out there? I've been around the picket lines this morning, I've been about a dozen picket lines, and I have indicated to you before that uh, TSSA is not a, a militant union, it's not a union that's known for taking in industrial action. But I can sense the mood is hardening amongst my members. It's not weakening. We've now lost three days' pay. Uh, there's another day being planned for the 29th of November, as Bob says. We believe the public mood is starting to swing behind us. If it, if it wasn't behind us before, I was listening to the radio this morning as I went from picket line to picket line, and the public understand that it isn't just about the Oyster Camp. When you take 800 jobs out of an operational railway, you cannot otherwise than impinge upon safety. And it's all right saying, well, these incidents only happen now and again. If you're in the middle of it, it doesn't matter if it happens now and again. If you're in the middle, if you're down in one of those tunnels and there's a fire and you don't know the way out and there's nobody there to help you, by God, you'll be wishing that you had supported the trade unions who were going out in a safety issue. The job losses are still um, there on the table. They've not been withdrawn. We believe at a time of heightened security, not just about last weekend, but obviously the statements have been made in the last four to five weeks by the Home Office Minister and also the Foreign Office Minister for America, that we are on a heightened uh, alert, especially in public uh, places, that to take 800 jobs out and then take a further 1,200 jobs. And can I say, first of all, when people start saying about the other jobs are not front line, I don't know what a front line job is. Every single person that works for a company is a cog in the wheel. And if you take the infrastructure away, what you're basically doing is that all you've got is a shop window with no goods at the back of it. We're available for negotiations. Uh, we've got a further strike at the end of the month, which has already been announced, that is uh, still on. And as far as we're concerned, we're urging uh, the Mayor of London to once again get everyone together. He may not accept our point of view, we may not accept his point of view, but he should get all parties round the table to see what common ground there is, and then make the initiative to try and get a settlement. We would like for him, as Mayor of London, uh, like he does with business leaders, is to sit round the table and explain what his vision is for Transport for London over the next four years. That's all we're asking for. Now, we would like to put a point of view up about how we would like to see uh, the TfL run the service over the next four years. But unless he actually sits down and offers us an opportunity to speak to him, and we've got an opportunity to listen to him, then it's never going to happen. The precondition for that is that you, you, you don't have any industrial action open with TfL. Isn't that right? so well, we had no industrial action from... Uh, or some sort of dis it's any dispute. Well, isn't well it? we had no yeah. dispute for the last two years, but he yeah. still didn't speak to us. Yeah, he's been yeah. there 41 months, and he still ain't spoken to us. All he said last night was, "It would take us for several pints of beer." Well, he can save some money straight away. What about several pints of beer? We just want a meeting with him. Dan, Dan he, he stood in a platform that said he was going to get a no strike deal with the trade unions. That's what he, when he put himself up in front of Londoners, he put himself up and said he was going to get a no strike deal with the troop, troop trade unions. Now he won't talk to us because we're in dispute, but he said two years, over two years to pick the phone up to Bob and I to, to decide how he's going to get a no, a, a, a no strike deal with us. He's never picked the phone up. You know, he, he either is the Mayor of London responsible for running transport in London or he isn't. And he did have a political choice, by the way, because you talk about he's going to have to cut. He says another political choice. He could have extended the congestion charge and brought himself in 55 to £60 million uh, pounds a year to, to actually spend in, in, in a transport system in London. He politically chose not to do that. The London paper, the Evening Standard, go onto their website and they're saying on there, I read an hour ago, that it's the... Um, worst disruption than ever before. So it's not about losing our grip. As far as we're concerned, our members are solidly supporting the dispute. Uh, and by the way, I'm, I, I'm happy that uh, the travelling public gets to their uh, place of destination. Uh, it's not about having a go at the public. This is about making sure that we can look at ourselves in the mirror in the morning and we can wake up and say uh, that uh, we never allowed these people to leave the industry. And the event of saying happening like, you know, what the coroner said last week in the, uh, the bombings that took place in 7-7, that these people played the actual crucial role of evacuating the travelling public. 
Last week these people are heroes, and they're trying to turn the tides this week, the media and TfL, by saying, you know, they're the real villains. And the only activity that they talk about in a booking office is selling tickets. The Oyster card <coughs> doesn't work the whole time. People buy an Oyster card at a newsagent, try and use it, something goes wrong. They don't go back to the newsagent, they've got to go to the booking office. The newsagent can't deal with that. I got on, the, I got on the Houston a couple of weeks ago. Put my Oyster card in, gets downstairs, signal failure, gets back up, came back up, said to the staff, how do I get my refund? Stand in queue at the window. The queue was a mile long because everybody was doing the same thing. So it's not just the activity. We want to measure everything. And look, we're not Luddites. We are not Luddites. If there is an effect, and I don't want people standing about doing nothing, and I can assure you, neither do my members want to stand around doing nothing. But when we hear the Commissioner for London, Peter Hendy, saying that people can read a good book, all you need to do is get a job, that actually is belittling people, and it's hardening people's attitude. And it is not helpful in an industrial dispute to demean people like that. Uh, for example, last night, Hendon Station and Collindale Station was left open all night. Uh, contractors who have to sign on to work with the supervisor couldn't sign on for work because there was no one there. But the more important thing and the worrying thing, anyone could have walked into those two stations last night and done anything. Not even a terrorist attack, they could have stripped the cable, uh, which would have caused massive disruption as well. But uh, here we're being told at the weekend that you can't put an ink uh, printer on a, on a plane because it might blow up. And then you're leaving London underground stations wide open with 3.1 million people using them. And it does seem to me that people now are starting to see trade unions fighting up for their members and stopping. What's going on? Taking 800 jobs out of the underground when passenger numbers are increasing and we're, we're 20 months away from, from the Olympics, which is bound <coughs> to be a terrorist target, just doesn't make sense. And I think people understand that now.